a year ago, if I'd spoken to you about face masks, then you'd have thought of buying something from Lush or something as part of a spa treatment, not something we would use to do our daily shop with. The concept of social distancing didn't exist. The, the word furlough, I don't think any of us would have known what that meant. But in this last year, it has shown me that as individuals, as a community, as, as, as a people, we can make massive changes and sacrifices for the sake of our well-being and other people's well-being. And as we go on this journey of uh, looking at well-being, I pray that each one of us will be able to make choices and changes that will benefit our well-being and ultimately the whole well-being of the church. You see, well-being is my responsibility. My well-being is my responsibility. I have control over how I behave and what I do. But it's also something that God is concerned about. God is concerned about my well-being and not just my spiritual well-being. You may just think, well, God's only concerned about things spiritually. But, but And yes, he is. Uh, I, I, let me just start with these uh, words from Ephesians. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, But God is so rich in mercy, he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by great, God's grace that you have been saved, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ Jesus. He is concerned with our spiritual health, but he's also concerned with our physical health. We just need to read uh, those verses, say in John 10.10, 10, he came to give us life and life in all of its fullness, or Proverbs 3, following on those lovely words that talk about trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It then says in 3 verse 8, trusting God will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. You see, trusting God is more than just something spiritual. It has a physical impact. God is concerned about our emotional health, our thoughts, our feelings, our sense of peace. Uh, I've, I've used these words uh, this year already from uh, Philippians 4. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You see, he is concerned about our spiritual, our physical, but also our emotional well-being and health. He's concerned about our relational health. There's so many verses in the Bible that talk about friendship and the benefits of friendship, our ability to forgive and restore relationships, our ability to one another to look out for each other's. He's concerned about my financial health, my, my finance, my generosity, my um, stewarding, all that he's given me, my contentment with that which I have. And he's also concerned with my vocational health, my sense of purpose, my calling, my, my serving, my doing. We heard earlier from those uh, uh, in the family time about, uh, about this verse, but Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. You see, he's concerned about what we do, our vocational well-being. So God is concerned for our well-being and we see this through Jesus as well, don't we? I uh, Just a, a, a few... Uh, uh, statements Jesus made in Matthew 11, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. And I believe that's a physical rest as well as a spiritual and emotional rest. John 7 verse 37, Jesus said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. John 6 35 says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. So yes, I have a responsibility for my well-being, you have for yours, but actually it's not about us, it's not about me and you, but it's about him. Do you notice in those words of Jesus, he says, come to me and then I will give you this. We need to choose to be centered on Jesus. I know for me, on a, on a daily basis, my day goes so much better if I choose to centre it on God. 
on those days where I am hurried and busy and not thinking of him, the the not nice part of me tends to come out, the grumpy or the distracted part. But when I'm centered on him and on his priorities, then what I see is much, much better. I'd love us over this uh, course of this well-being journey to also consider Psalm 23, a beautiful psalm that uh, I know has spoken to many of us in uh, different situations, but it's a psalm that talks uh, and says a lot about our wellness uh, as well. And I'd love us to, th to focus on that. And let me just, uh, for, for today's talk, just read Psalm 23 to us from the New Living Translation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path, bringing honour to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honour me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And I just want to, this morning, look at the first part, the first few verses of that psalm. And it starts to back up what I've just said, that we need to be centred on God. It starts with, the Lord is my shepherd. It starts with this relationship, this focus on God, this focus on this personal relationship. The Lord is my shepherd. It starts with a sense of trusting and a reliance, this, this imagery of Re relying on the shepherd, the one that is there for all that we need. You see, my wellness flows from my relationship with God. My wellness flows out of my relationship with God. And let me just pause for a moment. Do you know that relationship with God? Do you have that relationship like David in this psalm could say, the Lord is my shepherd? Can you talk in that way? If you can't, can I encourage you today to reach out to God, to say, God, I need you. I need you in my life. I need you as my Lord and my Saviour. And it's as simple as that, saying, God, I've got it wrong, but I know if I can trust you and I can turn to you. And if that's you, then I encourage you, pray that prayer, but then give us a call. Give us, uh, drop us a message through our website. We'd love to connect with you to help you on that journey. The Lord is my shepherd. Have you noticed that uh, for many people around us, life has become about just gathering stuff? It may be that for many, life is about working to get money, to buy stuff, houses, cars, possessions, or gathering titles. We go to work to get a title, a badge that says, I am now this, and we collect more and more of these badges. But David, in this psalm, was able to say, I have all that I need. I lack nothing. That the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, I, I lack nothing. In other words, David was secure in God. You see, my wellness is my responsibility, but it's not about my efforts. Who I am is defined by God and not my efforts. What I have is provided by God and not my efforts. And you see, when I realise that all I, all I am is defined by God, then how I behave, how I act, will be different. When I realise that all I, that I have is provided by God, then what I do with that, how I respond to the, the things that I have, will be different. I love the words in 1 Chronicles 29, written by David, the same man who wrote this psalm at the end of his life, in a prayer in 1 Chronicles 29, was able to say, everything we have comes from you, comes from you, God, and we give you only what you first gave us. He was 
able to be secure in God and recognise all that he had was from God. As we go through this well-being journey, you'll notice in the video they, they use a, a fuel gauge uh, to, to look at the, our wellness in the, in the different areas that we'll cover. So let me ask a question, are you feeling empty today? Are you feeling drained in a particular part of your life? Um, are you feeling that you, there's just nothing there? Because we see from this psalm, not only is God our provider, not only is he our protector, but he also restores us. And I love this, that we are restored by God. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. And I want to finish this talk just by looking at these, these words because I love these words. And they, they say a lot to us about well-being. We start off with this, he makes me lie down in green pastures. You see, to lie down is a position of security. For a sheep to lie down means that they are feeling safe and secure. I can remember uh, many years ago when Monty uh, came round and we had a dog. Monty looked at our dog and said, she, she is secure. She feels part of the family because of the way she was lying, as dogs do, kind of very in a relaxed state, rather than that slightly tense way that, that dogs can also lie. She was relaxed. But you lie down when you are feeling secure, when you feel secure in who you are. And I also, I think with these words, he makes me lie down, we have a choice to rest. And you know, it's better to choose to rest than for God to make us lie down and rest. And I, I, we do need to take advantage of those moments to rest. And then it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, this is a, a desert culture. It isn't like us where we can walk around and see an awful lot of grass. This was a, a, in a desert uh, situation where, where the green pastures were more sp scarce and they would have to travel. And that's where the later part of the psalm, even though I walk through the valley uh, of death, that's, that's this journey from one place of resting to another. So, so it may have been that these green pastures were quite, uh, quite scattered. So it's not a, he makes me lie down in green pastures every day. There are times when we are walking and on the journey. But we need to make sure that we know what these green pastures are for us. And we need to rest in them too. So let me ask you that question. Do you know what your green pasture is? So there will be something that strengthens you and empowers you and gives you back energy. What's that for you? And you know it's different for each one of us. For, for one of you, it may be cooking. I, I feel empowered and strengthened when I cook. I know for Sarah, that's something that, that she finds very um, tiring. In, in, in a different way, but I am strengthened by that. But you may be strengthened by isolation, by be, being out on your own on a walk. You may have found this last year very strengthening. I found it very draining. I mean, I'm energized by people. You may find exercise or running or all sorts of things that one person might go, oh my goodness, why do you do that? But for someone else, it's empowering, it's strengthening, it's knowing what your green pasture is and making the space and the time to rest in that. And then we get, he makes he leads me by still waters or quiet waters. And this is a safe place to drink. For a sheep to, to, to go down and drink in a fast flowing stream is dangerous. They're not great on their balance. If they fall into the water, they're gonna be washed away and dry, drowned. So the pools, those quieter waters, where they could go and drink and not be in danger, were what the shepherd would lead them to. So this is a place where, where, where God is leading you, which is safe and secure. But this might be, as I said earlier, this might be scarce, it might be dotted around. This isn't just talking about holidays and long periods of rest, but it just might be moments of calm. 
It might be a cup of tea in the afternoon. It might be a walk with a friend that energizes you. It might be a conversation or a moment of that you can grab from the day. But can I encourage us to know what our green pastures are and when there's the opportunity to lie down and to rest in them. And then this, this short section finishes with, he restores my soul. He refreshes, he brings a restoration. There's a sense, this word is like uh, the word he resets, he resets my soul. He restores it back to the original default, the, the maker's uh, default. I don't know if you've ever had a phone that's become overburdened by all the apps and things on it and then you have to go back and, and reset to the factory default. And that often will clear up a lot of problems. And I pray that as we go on this journey together as a church and individually, that we will center on Jesus, that we will become secure in God, but as a result, he will reset our souls. He will restore to us that which has become overworked or lost and I really pray that, that for you you will know that resetting that restoring and that wellness that comes from God and from God alone so yes we have a responsibility for our wellness and I encourage you connect in on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, through the home groups watch the video join the conversation I encourage you to to read the devotional guide that we've we've given you and to follow through that and to let God speak to you. I encourage you to consider these things, but I also encourage each one of us to look to God, who is the one that will provide us to center our lives on God, to, to become secure in who we are because of him, and to allow him to rest us and restore our souls. So may God give you all that you need. And may he restore you so that you are fit for the journey ahead to serve him and to worship him. Amen.